Moses, how did you enjoy your time in India? Yeah, I had a great time. Um, you know, just go back to the same franchise I was at last year and, you know, build on those relationships I'd made last year. And, uh, you know, we played some really good cricket over there as well. We, we didn't start off too well, but um, throughout the middle and all well, aside from the last couple of games, we actually finished quite well. So um, it's a long tournament, it goes for 14 games. It's probably played in about the same time as the BBL is, but it's just very condensed and there's obviously a lot of domestic travel in between all the games and it gets quite busy, but uh, it's good fun. It was, I had a lot of... I had a lot of fun. A lot of people talk about playing uh, that many games in, in a lot of days that it actually can improve your cricket and get you into some pretty good form and you seem to be in some pretty good form. Um, actually finished the tournament as the leading bowler, best bowling average in the competition. You must be extremely confident with your game at the moment. Yeah, I mean, um, I guess my style of bowling, I didn't go over there expecting to have the lowest bowling average. I sort of went over there um, to sort of I guess build on what I'd achieved in the BBL here and that was you know building a sound setting a sound base with the bat for guys to either bat around me or you know once the game got deep um, to be able to you know start to accelerate things there but you know I guess coming in at three and four um, the way you bat is often dictated by the situation and I guess for me having the brains and having the awareness to um, to I guess build and bat around the situation of the game and you know there's a few games over there that you know, I came in and there was absolutely no pressure on. We'd gotten off to such a good start and I could just let myself go and have a bit of a crack. And then there was other games that, you know, I needed to knuckle down and sort of get set for a few overs before I could, you know, start dashing, dashing around. And I think that's, I guess, probably where I've improved the most in the last few years with the bat. Um, and as you mentioned, with the ball, uh, it certainly wasn't something I was going over there thinking that would happen. But... Um, you know, again, in this, in the last BBL, I sort of, you know, I'd, I worked a lot on a few, few things that I, I thought I'd made mistakes in in the past, and obviously being fully fit um, and being able to work on your bowling for a full year helps. And um, I think to work on just making sure my econ economy rate was low and keep building pressure. Um, it's not always about taking wickets for me in, in T20. I feel like, um, you know, obviously as someone who's primarily a top top six batter in T20 cricket, um, the overs that I give should be sort of building pressure overs rather than taking wicket overs. But I guess with building pressure, a lot of the time you can you can end up taking wickets, which happened in the IPL. Uh, million dollar question, are you looking at yourself as more of a batting all-rounder or a bowling all-rounder at the moment? Oh, it's tough to say. I, I still think, um, you know, if you're batting in the top four, um, you've always got to consider yourself um, first and foremost a batting all-rounder um, and then and then if you're bowling four overs like I was over there then you sort of then you can start leaning towards I guess yeah you know, I'd like to think of myself a genuine all-rounder um, but obviously it depends on what I do better that day and if I stuff up on <laughs> in both forms then I'm, I'm a fielder so you know you, you can't take things for granted because cricket has a funny way of just you know Taking, well, taking the feet from underneath here and you just got to enjoy, enjoy it while it's going well and obviously not get too down about it when it's not going so well and um, yeah, I don't know, I think every game I change whether I'm a batting or bowling or whatever all rounder you want to be but I, I still consider myself and I still work on both, on both bowling and batting as much as each other. Uh, onward to Surrey, what are you looking forward to about the T20 blast over there? Uh, I guess just or personally just building up um, and consolidating on what I've been doing the last six months, uh, continuing to play cricket and and also really looking forward to a couple of opportunities in the four day game um, and getting to learn and play with guys like Kumar Sangakara and Kevin Peterson um, who have obviously a wealth of international knowledge and there's a lot of other players over there that have played international cricket and very successful domestic cricketers which um, you know, in different different formats and different situations and different conditions, I feel like you can always learn off. So, um, you know, one thing I've started to learn as I've gotten older is that I learn quicker, which is funny. It's like the older you get, the quicker you learn and the more, the, the faster you make adaptions to your game and the more you're able to sort of do things on the run a little bit. But, um, you know, I just love learning and love what people, you know, listening to what people have to say and trying to get better. and. I guess that was probably the biggest mistake I made when I was younger was um, s sort of being a bit too foolish, thinking this is the way, this is the way I play, this is you know, this is the only way, this is the way I've been successful. But you know, I think you've always got to tinker um, with and, and keep improving your game as much as you can. 
We saw a lot of your uh, adaptations and your, your variations working really well from your bowling in India. Uh, what do you think the conditions in England are going to offer you? Um, well, it's, it's strange because the same variations sort of work for me here in Australia. Um, I went over to India thinking, uh, well not, th not doubting, but just sort of thinking, oh, I wonder how we'll go over there in those conditions. Obviously the grounds are smaller, um, the outfields are faster, um, and they've got some very skilled batters over there and some guys who, you know, adapt to certain things you know very quickly and um, you know I was sort of not sure how how it would go um, but you know it was quite successful and I'm, v I'm looking forward to getting over to England um, and again a completely different set of conditions um, different set of players different competition and starting from scratch again so I don't know how it'll go but all I know is I've got to stick to what I do well and stick to what's been working for me and make little tinkering changes as I mentioned earlier um, to, to suit those conditions. And final question, there were a number of six teammates, uh, you look at Lummy and Ricky uh, over there in the English uh, county system, have you made any plans to catch up with any of those guys? Yeah definitely, um, obviously especially with someone like Lummy who uh, has been part of the Sixers since the get set, um, we've built some pretty strong friendships there so uh, looking forward to catching up with Lummy, um, haven't spoken to Ricky much but we'll definitely catch up with him over there and obviously big Chris Tremlett who played for the Sixers a couple of years ago, he's at Surrey as well so looking forward to reconnecting there.